The Green you know, Book. Green Book. The Go Green ahead. Book. There was a man, a postal worker named Victor, Victor Hugo Green, and he decided all these Negroes were hatting up and, and going to the north, and he decided that he wanted to do a book, a travel guide, like AAA, telling them where they could stay, where they could eat, where they could even get their, their cars filled up, because some racist gasoline own, um, station owners wouldn't even fill Negroes' cars. And so every year he published the Green Book. And so I'm there huh. with Isabel in the car driving up like we're a couple in the 1936, driving from the south to the north, reading the Green Book, saying, well, we could stay over here in, in um, Nellie Smith's house. And, and you know, because there were no hotels wow. that black people could Never stay. heard of the Green Book. It, and, and do you have a, I take it somebody has a copy of it. Oh, yeah, Google it. You can also buy it at auctions. And it's online. You can download it and you can see it. It's just called The Green Book by Victor Hugo Green. It was a travel guidebook, the first designated. He was a black man. And yeah. it was the first targeted exclusively for the African-American community. Wow. And it, it had... Uh, it included every state where it was safe for black people to stop and um, get rooms and get bored, you know, and, and you know, eat decent food. Every day of my life, I'm aware of my blackness. I never forget that. I'm Richard L. Mitchell. I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm 83 years of age. I grew up in Kildare, Texas, a farming community in Northeast Texas. I joined the military at the age of 18. I was in the military when I first heard of the Green Book. I uh, was looking through an Ebony magazine and I saw an ad for the Green Book. It said, the Negro Motors Green Book Travel Guide. I think I paid a dollar for the Green Book. This was in 1963, and I bought a used 1960 Dodge Dart. There's never been a car like Dart before. There's never been a car like Dart. And that's what we made the trip cross country. Before the coming of the Green Book, it was very difficult to find accommodations. You'd see a billboard out on the highway somewhere where it says such and such motel for colored, a such and such restaurant for colored. You know, you'd just have to stop wherever you could find a place and hope that you could find a place at nightfall. The Green Book symbolized a, a saving device for black motorists. It meant not having to sleep in your car. You could get a hot meal. A great change is at hand. People sacrificed a lot so that things could be better for the kids nowadays. And I don't think kids realize what people like me and people of my generation experienced. They don't know what it's like to not be able to go someplace. The pictures on his wall are from 50 years ago. 
But Ernest Green remembers it like yesterday. Well, I think what stands out uh, is the fact that I, as a teenager, thought that uh, desegregating the schools in Little Rock was an important part of progress for African Americans. Green was one of the Little Rock Nine, a group of African American students who enrolled in Central High School in the Arkansas capital in 1957. While Green was making history in the schools, his family navigated the segregated roads using a little-known guide for African American families. The Green Book was a, um, I think, an institution in black life. Uh, it was one of those unknown survival tools for black people that had to move around around the country. I was a teenager, so I knew that uh, the Green Book was a necessity for us to have a place to stay. A place to stay, a place to eat, even a car repair shop that would be friendly to blacks, all pulled together in this directory. Decades later, Green had forgotten about the precious resource until a recent conversation with Calvin Ramsey, a playwright and author. He mentioned that he was doing a, uh, a play around this book. And, I, and as he described it, um, I remember that I had had a personal experience with the Green Book. My aunt and mother mapping out a program for us to travel from Little Rock to Hampton, Virginia for my sister's graduation. Personal tales like this inspired the playwright, and he learned about the travel guide's 1936 genesis. Well, Victor Green, uh, African-American uh, gentleman who has traveled himself and, and had hardships on the road, uh, embarrassment, embarrassing situations uh, uh, that he didn't want to see his people continue to have. So he said, if I can do something about this, I will. The idea took off, and year after year, the Green Book grew, providing resources for all 50 states. Everything from uh, lodging to restaurants to beauty shops to barber shops, uh, mechanic shops, later on doctor's offices, dentists, pretty much anything you would need on the open road. As the book gained popularity, it also picked up a major sponsor. But once Standard Oil got involved, they hired professional marketeers, they set up an office in New York, they hired men who had training in this type of thing. Then they started training African-American men how to run their own service stations. And from there, they could sell more green books. Today, Ramsey takes his children's book, Ruth and the Green Book, to elementary schools, bringing old tales to a new audience, and in the process, picking up on a dream that the creator of the green book held dearly. Travel, exposure, knowledge, all of it is uh, fatal to prejudice. It, it requires people to think broader to uh, this idea about uh, universality that uh, begin to see people as people. Big lessons from the little guide that history almost forgot. Frederica Whitfield, CNN, Atlanta.